know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. What's up, what's up, what's up, GYBB? Get your balls back, WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, Harry, you ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, man. I don't even know why you asked me a question like that. You know, goddamn well, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm doing great. Here's, here's the crazy thing about this. This is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 400 times before, but this time I mean it. All it's right. It's nice. it. <laughs> Um, you want to do the intro? Yeah, yeah why not? Because this, this guy and I go way back. This is not just any regular guest. My this guy and I maybe ten years at this point. I don't know how long we've been friends, but uh, we we met doing the Andy Kaufman Awards. We are each recipients of the now defunct Andy Kaufman <laughs> Award. Uh, a fantastic comedian. Give it up for my friend Marcus Monroe, everybody. Put What's your up, hands. Marcus? Hello, What's going on, Dante, brother? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me on your on your podcast, Harry. Thank you for the lovely introduction. I think, Harry, it's been 12 years since we've known each other. Is that true? Wow. wow. 12 years, man. And we look great. We look I, great. You know what? We do look pretty good. <laughs> I, look, I do look better. I can actually say I look better now than I did 12 years ago because I was a mess 12 years ago, no, to be were, quite honest. I mean, well, you, you're doing good. You are uh, you were always so funny. I. I immediately gravitated towards you during the the Andy Kaufman Award back in the day because you did wrestling themed. Uh, oh, that's like, right. I wouldn't call it sketches, but like your your performance was like wrestling themed, and you talked about the wrestlers who had died. You showed this beautiful I, montage. The one year I did my whole Andy Kaufman performance was a tribute to uh, to dead wrestlers who died of. Um, so funny. Just because it was wrestlers, that was the time frame like wrestlers were dying left and right due to like uh, yes, right, right, all right. the wrestlers who had been doing nothing but cocaine and steroids, steroids, and, Percocets, and amphetamines. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> they were dropping like flies, and then the companies were acting like. Like, I don't know, whatever, you know, it's another heart attack. What are you going to do? So I did a whole tribute and then it just got longer and longer and crazier. And then wrestlers who died, who you, who, uh, who you're, who died, but you're not that sad because they already achieved what they were going to achieve. And then wrestlers (laughs) who died of ODs, wrestlers who died. Here's wrestlers who are going to die and how they're going to die. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was that those those contests were very weird and fun and some oddball shit. And, uh, it was so fun. And I remember, the year you won, I think it was me and Harrison kind of played a joke on you where we were judges and we knew that you had made it to the finals. Oh, but Jesus. We, but we came up to you and we're like, hey, man, we're really sorry. We, we, we tried really hard. And then, they, <laughs> and then and then you were so bummed out because it was like the, maybe the fifth year that you had done it. I mean, it was the fifth year in a row that I competed in this contest and, and I was so hell belt up and winning it. And, and, and then like we kind of knew that we, we were we were going to like okay, this is Harry's year. I mean, not only should he have, he should have won the year I, the the year I won. Like, I think like he was so funny. Um, And and so so, I thought so too, but that doesn't matter. (laughs) Right, right, right. I mean, the thing about that award though, is you had people doing all sorts of different things. And it was really about the, the spirit of Wait, explain. I think you're going, you guys are going off on this tangent, which Harry always does. Um, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm known for that. He uh, explain what the Andy Kaufman thing was and what the, the kind of performance stuff, because I remember the year that he won 
I remember him being, and I, I don't know, I've known Harry. Harry suffers for depression and suicidal depression. So it was great right. that you guys ran a ran a joke on him because he might have killed himself. But anyway, <laughs> it's all in fun. <laughs> we we only let it, the joke go for two minutes. Yeah, okay. yeah, because uh, we knew his that's name all was he needed. announced. That's all he <laughs> needed, Marcus. It was two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. I'm sorry, Harry. You'd have been like, important. oh, man, I'm <laughs> really sorry. Pow! And you were like, yeah. what the fuck? Uh-huh. Was that a gunshot? I'm going to go out to get I'm cigarettes. Sorry. You don't smoke. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, um, man, I'm sorry. If explain that was the to Andy Corbin. Really Hold on. I got, yeah, I'm getting a visit right now. Hold oh, on. Wait, wait. Ah. There we go. There's little Dante Jr. Hey, little shit. Dante Jr. In the He's house. getting bigger. I remember the last time we every like I, you haven't seen him in a while. But watch this. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> look, at, look at him my god he's gigantic that's a man that is a full-on man he's, right only, there. he's not even two marcus that's the thing <laughs> Kid, I we were saying like that we gotta watch because he's getting so big but he's only he's only 20 months and he, he's talking better but he's not talking like what he looks like his age so everybody thinks he's retarded <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> he, he looks like he's He's five, and then he's going la 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 la. Oh, boy. oh my <laughs> god! That, that must that be a real weird. treat at the park in the sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's adorable. Oh yeah, hold on. Um, yeah, so yeah, he, he got big, right? Harry? Every time you I, see him, he's bigger. I mean, every time I go in there, he's just—it's a different baby. Yeah. Like he's just gigantic. He's got a full set of teeth. Uh, yeah. He's already wearing his Kyrie already, Irving's on. He's got his Kyrie. <laughs> he's already squatting uh, 75 pounds. It's crazy. Look at those. Oh, he's got the Kyrie Irving. Oh, those are nice. <laughs> nice. He has better shoes than I have. My God. Well, thanks the to the that's closing me. That's actually the uh, what you call it. The uh, the fans. They always send him sneakers. He, they keep oh, them. wow. Yo, tell him. He's a size 10. <laughs> you tell, yeah, yeah. Throw us a bone. Let him know so he's growing big. Yeah. Bye, <laughs> so, bye, bye, baby. Throw a anyway. size 10 uh, wide. And that's how <laughs> yes, you go. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, getting back to the thing. He is yeah, the, 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 uh, Andy the Kaufman, Kaufman was... Award was like a, an award given in the spirit of Andy Kaufman. If, if you don't know who Andy Kaufman is, he would do these weird avant-garde sort of comedy things. And sometimes he would do these sort of, I guess, semi pranks or performance art sort of stuff where like yeah. he would antagonize the audience on purpose. And it was sort of like, yeah, I think one day he he read War and Peace on. Yes, he actually read went to a uh, as a comedy show and he read War and Peace and until everybody left. Yeah, he would do that. <laughs> he would purposely walk out audiences, but like, you know, do weird things. And I mean, he's legendary. There's documentaries about him. He's fantastic. Um, so this award was that, so it was comedy, but it also had to be weird. It was like, there was no set decision of what this award was. So I don't know. I mean, a lot of different people, Marcus did some amazing stuff. I'm glad he won it. I, I finally won it because after five years, I did a film about how I was sick and tired of losing the Andy Kaufman awards. Yeah. And that's what well, won you were me talking the Andy to Kaufman. yourself. He did video. I remember right. you did video of talking to yourself in the future and in the past, it was just like, and then really? I went back in time and I killed all the former like I invented a time machine. And then I went back in time and started killing all the people who won the Andy Kaufman Award. Did you kill Marcus? Oh, or I no? did kill Marcus. Marcus <laughs> you is killed in, me in, a, in a car, I think I was um, I was tied up. He like, was tied, tied and in duct tape in a car, yeah. and duct taped in a car and he was dead in a car. <laughs> and I did a whole montage. So, that I was how'd traveling. you go Harrison? Uh, Harrison couldn't do it. He wanted to, I think, scheduling wise, he couldn't do it. So I just dragged a box. I showed his picture and then I dragged like a box that was, you know, his body was in it. <laughs> but I killed Nick so Vatterot. A lot of really great, talented people did, who did won it. Kristen Shaw win that one year? She did win it one year. Kristen the first Shaw, year, yeah. right? I, I don't remember if it was the first year. No, not year, the I think first year. The I second think or third. Honey won it the first year. Then Brent Weinbach, Brent Weinbach won it. Yeah. A and then Reggie Watts, Kristen Shaw. I think Kristen and Reggie kind of won it back to back. Yeah. Mm. A lot of people who are making significantly more money than I am have won that award. <laughs> have yes. gone on to great <laughs> have gone on to great things. And I'm broadcasting out of my dad's garage while I wait to find a new apartment. But it's dope, son. It's no, it's dope. great. Yeah. It's I'm legitimately proud of it, man. But that's where I met Marcus. And Marcus is uh we always gravitated towards each other. Marcus is yeah. a good dude. 
I think last time I saw you, you came to the cellar and we were hanging out at the cellar for a bit. Yeah, man. That was a good time, man. I always love going over there. Marcus, did we know each other before or not really? Well, I had known who you were, but we had never been on the same show. Or like, talk so or I just kind of like I kind of connected with Marcus and I was like, yo, I like this dude. I like, oh, I want to have him on my podcast. And so like I was just instantly like I said, when I saw Marcus, I was like, man, I love like I, you know, was too. somebody had hosted the show before and they were horrible. They were just mm. super like they, you know, just didn't have control over the room. The room sucked and they kept saying they kept just being inauthentic. Just, oh, you guys are great. You guys are fantastic. You know, this crowd. All right, guys, you ready for you? And they were just an awful, awful room. And he never and they were talking and they were talking to each other. Was just, and he never really stopped the room and said, hey, you guys suck. You know, you guys really stink. And this is this show's going to suck if you keep acting this way. And um, and so, so here's sorry not to interrupt, but this is an interesting part because this relates directly to dating. Right. Right. And so. The thing is that they teach you the, the initial thing is you want to please the audience. So you never want to shit in theory. You don't want to shit on the audience because then you'll lose the audience. But it's the same thing with relationships. Guys want to please a woman. Right. So you don't want to insult her, even though she deserves to be insulted and she's not a good person. So the irony is you keep going not along. To be, not to be. I, I think you, you can push back on being insulted, okay. but she, she deserves the truth. The truth. She, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The truth, like the truth is like, you're not good. Like you're not a good person. This this happened to me the other the other day. I was doing a show and I it was an outdoor show. So these people, people were walking by these. These two ladies were like very uh, flattering. They were like, oh, you're very funny. You're funny. And then I had my dog tag that I was wearing. And uh, oh, she goes, what's that? I go, it's, it's a dog tag I have. She goes, what's what's the picture of? I go, it's a picture of my dog. He passed away. So I have a little thing that uh, my girl got me with the dog. She goes, oh, that's a bummer. You should get rid of that. And I go, what? <laughs> and I was like, what? She goes, oh, yeah, it's just kind of like a bummer. I go, what the fuck is the matter with you? Which I would <laughs> never do like five years ago. But I was just like, what? Do you understand that I just clearly this has some type of significant value to me? Because why said, would I wear this, it? You should get rid of it. Yeah, she was like a. Was like she a, attractive? Or? She was like an older, like milfy, but like, like she clearly, was hot. She was uh, she was attractive. Like she could have sure. been hot back in the day. She was just... uh, she she turned some heads in Studio 54. You okay, know what I'm fair saying? enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> she got a lot of free cocaine. She got a lot of. Yeah, she got <laughs> a lot of she got a lot of bumps and never paid. You know, yeah, I got you. And that's what I knew what this was. I go, you were that is a terrible thing to say. Well, oh, no, no, that's not what I'm I go. No, it is what you meant. And like, you know, she was apologetic or whatever. But I didn't give a fuck because I wasn't trying to hit on her. Right, right. It doesn't matter. But at the same time, I'm like what she needed to be told that because I'm sure she's gotten away yeah. with saying a bunch of outlandish shit that's just mean and reckless. Yeah. And she didn't even think it was mean and reckless. She thought she was being like funny or something, I guess. But I don't think she was breaking balls. She was like, yeah, that's a bummer. You should not wear that. And she, she's telling you, you shouldn't wear your dog tag. Right. Yeah. Just but just the nature of that, like, what the fuck is a matter? Why would you tell somebody that we just met? This is our entire interaction. This yeah, is not yeah. like two minutes into the. Did I mean, you say is, that as well? Did you say I, I've just I met you seconds ago? I didn't. I just said, why would you say something? Clear. This has some value. What's what's the matter with you? I didn't even say I didn't even get to that part. There's so much rushing through yeah. my head at that moment. Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. But she wasn't used to that. And she turned her demeanor. I mean, I was still polite and whatever. And I was done with the conversation. But like it, it was clear that nobody is nobody had stopped her in her life to go. Yeah, yeah no, you're being an asshole right now. But that's yeah. the same thing. Sorry. So to get back to what you were talking about with the audience, which is every once in a while, you have to not every once in a while. You should always be authentic and tell the truth. It's one thing to try to be polite and to try to maintain a good rapport and relationship. It's another thing to lie to them and keep this awful energy going. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Uh, yeah. It, no, it was just a fun, it was a fun room and I, I don't host often, right, but right. when I do, I try to pretend, put myself in the audience shoes. Yeah. Sometimes 
the shows can feel really long. You got a lot of people on there. Some people are running yeah. the clock. Some people aren't very good. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't the case, thankfully. A, lo- a lot the of them were not on. good. A lot of them were not good. But Marcus was setting them up. I mean, Marcus's energy it was infectious in a way that made the room. The room, I'm telling you, the room, that when I saw that, like uh, initially, I was like, oh, this is going to stink. And I think Marcus is energy was so infectious that he, he made them a great a great audience thank you very much Dante it, w- it was a fun it was a fun challenge because it hosting is not easy and you know you gotta yeah you're right you gotta keep that energy up you gotta you have a, an act that just bombs you have to reset refresh you're kind of starting over you got to build yeah. that momentum up again um, yeah. so I'm always doing a little bit of the time in between the acts and just kind of mm. doing crowd work and making sure everyone's comfortable that's you know that's the job of an MC. You're kind of like the host of. It's like people are coming into your comedy club. Like you yeah. don't own the club, but in, yeah, you know, yeah. in a sense, you're in charge. You're the host. Yeah, I mean that's why they call it the host. But I mean you're exactly. you set the tone, you maintain the tone, and sometimes you need to stop and go, hey, hey, this is this is not okay. This but is it's right. interesting the the way you mentioned it, putting yourself in the audience's shoes too, which is also having like being empathetic or understanding what the other person's perspective is too, which is like, all right, what are they dealing with and how much of this can I affect? Or also thinking about like, all right, this person just bombed. Let me reset the room. They don't necessarily teach you that. Like they don't, nobody sits there and teaches you that, but it's giving a shit about what that person is going through. Like, let me create the most positive environment. The same thing, you know, to tie it back, like what is that other person I'm trying to date going through or what are they, de- what are they dealing with? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I think when, when it comes to hosting, when it comes to dating, all these things, the most important thing is being self-aware. Fair enough. And what way do you mean that? Like, because you- there, there's nothing worse than being at a show and seeing, um, uh, having an MC come on, and think everything is going great when it's, it's clearly not yeah, or vice yeah. versa. Um, even though you want it to be going good, you have to stop and say, okay, what is really going on here? What, yeah, you know, yeah. if you're not saying lines that you memorize that you're not doing bits, you're doing, you're like being in the moment. And I right, think right. dating and hosting, you could learn a lot from just being self-aware and know where your place is, know what people are kind of thinking about you when they look at you. What do you look like? Um, you know, all those, all those kinds of things. That's why I start, my my ho- when I'm hosting, I always talk about my appearance right away. You know, it's just so hey, I know what I look like. Let's let's talk about it or something like that. Right, right. And let's get past it so that we can we can move on to the. Well, to- I didn't say get past it. What's wrong that they need to get past? Dante? <laughs> what are you well, saying about? Me? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, look at me, dude. I, you you gotta know <laughs> we need to talk about it and then get past it. That that's right. always my because right. otherwise they they get so fixated on it. That they're not, you know, they're not even listening because they're like, well, what is this? What is it? You know, and then once you sure. ma- you mentioned it, they laugh and they and, and I mean, you know, look, I, look, you, you got a great umbach look. Come on now. You know, we, we <laughs> <laughs> I love an umbach look. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. If I look you like a like, brother, I'll look take like it. all three members of Hanson. <laughs> Thank like you so the, much, man. The, I do appreciate that. You, you have no idea. Brother. You just made my night. <laughs> They are good looking guys. They are all good looking bunch of dudes. Um, yeah, it, it's the, the, the self-awareness is, is great. I, I think that there's also a, a, a point of when you if you're acting like this dude, who this dude who was hosted, the, he hosted the date, the, the, the show before the show you before yours. Yeah. And he he just it was like, oh, you guys are great. And, and it's like they know they suck. They know that the situation and even if they know they don't know that they suck, they know that it's not going well. And and then what you're basically saying is I'm willing, I, you know, as a host, I'm willing to put up with whatever you want to toss at me. I'm not going to mention it. We're all going to going to be the 800 pound gorilla in the room and nobody's going to mention it because I'm too I, I'm too insecure about who I am as a performer to even mention this because I want you to like me and I'll take whatever you give me, whatever you want to give me, you'll take it because I don't deserve anything. You know, this sounds yep. so much like uh, guys, what guys do and put up with, you know, like women saying reckless shit and behaving in crazy ways like, you know, drunk chicks. That, that's why the worst audience in comedy is the drunk woman, the oh, drunk. The, yeah, it's the people say that. 
Go ahead. Go what ahead. do you I'm think? Sorry. Go, sorry. Go ahead. Talk, it's nothing worse than a drunk dude who you end up having to fight after. The, I mean, I've had that. Wait, I mean, I mean, we don't get you don't get that that often. But a dude who's like, fuck you and running up on the stage. I'd rather I'd take a drunk <laughs> girl. That happened to you in the past. Like, do you get a lot of that? Because I'm trying to think of how many who, times me? I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying how many times I, I've seen that compared to I'm not saying you're wrong. I mean, that's obviously your experience, but maybe it's the Dante Nero experience where guys are like, it's kind of like professional wrestlers going to a bar. Like, <laughs> how tough is this guy? Oh, this guy <laughs> thinks he's tough. Maybe you get a little bit of that. Like, oh, yeah, 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 Chuck yeah. Liddell goes into a bar. Oh, big man, <laughs> big guy. You want to fuck up my rebel? Oh, right. my boss, so what are you going to do there? That yeah, might be I'm, another. What I'm saying is that might be another Dante uh, Nero exclusive experience. Dog, where, I, you never see. I mean, it happened to Big J at the strip. That's sure. That's it. Happen it to happened to, to Gary yeah. Goldman. It happened to Ben Bailey. It Shit, happened. Right. To, it happened to um uh, Mike D. Stefano. Um, it yeah. happened to. Um, Mike D. Stefano had his fucking lunatic brother there with him. Y- yeah, yeah. It like, happened to Patrice and I love plenty Gilliam. of times. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Mike, Bur- it happened to Mike Birbiglia once. Jesus, who the fuck attacked Mike what? Birbiglia? I, yeah. Well, he was just he was roasting this guy, and he got. I mean, look, we could Google, we could go on YouTube yeah, right yeah. now. Remember that video I sent you? Guy kicks a uh, comic, kicks guy in the stomach. <laughs> the guy runs up on the stage and he kicks the dude in the, in the stomach. I we we sent a couple Vaguely. of those bitches. I gotta find that one. Hold on, <laughs> let me. Let me see if I have that. Uh, fair enough. I think I, I in my experience, I've seen a lot more. Now, here's the thing. Those are those are like catastrophic events like those rarely right, happen. But, but if we send those are the but worst. By, ca- yeah, you, you I guess I mean? by quantity, though, quantity, though. Yeah, but we're not talking about quantity. You didn't say quantity. Yeah, you're you right. Said, in all fairness, you're right. If I got to knuckle up or be I would, we, I sent you one where the guy hit the dude with a mic stand. Let Remember? me find that. <laughs> I got to find it. She's insane. Yeah, so Man. I mean, I get what you mean. Drunk, 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 drunk white girls or bachelorette parties is annoying. Sure, it's annoying, but you don't have to beat somebody off the stage. I had a fuck, I had a uh, army vet run up on the stage. Well, he didn't run up on the stage, but he was like, I used to do a joke about a guy missing fingers, a, a kid that oh, I. Oh, that's to, right. And the dude goes, "You think amputees is a fucking joke?" And, I, and he starts running up and he come, starts approaching the stage. And I was like, dude, don't don't do it, man. Don't 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 do it. Don't do it to yourself. He was like, I had a, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Dante. No, no, go, go. I had a guy. I was on a cruise before. I mean, this was like eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And a guy <laughs> just wandered on stage and it scared me. I didn't know no. what to do. I just wandered he just, on. Just came on stage and during my set just stood there and I kind of like push, I like pushed him away. I was like, what do you like? I think when, and I think this, this also like goes to wrestling because a lot of time wrestling fans will jump in the ring and then the wrestlers will just beat the hell out of these guys. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I think Does that, I that actually happens with dudes. It I mean, when a legit. lot more in, back in the day. Now, yeah. it's like a big show they has kind of secu- know it's a they, they have know. security. So now the thing is, let the security handle it because they don't want lawsuits and stuff like right, right. But back in the day. Um, Bret is, Hart Hall of Fame. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. A guy. Bret Hart was doing a Hall of Fame speech and a fucking mentally ill like MMA fighter came up. And fucking grabbed him like with a German suplex, grabbed him behind the waist and threw him on the ground on the ring. I mean, Bret Hart's retired. He's an older guy. Let me see if I can find it. But really? and then they proceeded to beat and but the here's the thing. There were no fans there in that year. It was or the whole front row is all professional wrestlers because it's the Hall of Fame thing. Oh my god. So immediately, like 10 to 20 professional wrestlers beat the fuck out of this guy on his way as police like, and security are escorting family, him. family, like Bret Hart's like his relatives. Whole family there. there. The his whole, whole family is the sh- there. His, yeah, his whole family beat the shit out of this guy. Uh, but I think like if if you were on stage, Dante, Harry, this question's for both of you. Okay. And a guy just wanders on stage. It's weird. What are are you within your rights to like beat the shit out of a person for doing that? Or I mean no? now, I mean now, because I mean when we yeah. when we started doing comedy, man, but now you're not in the rights to beating anybody anymore. I mean, I, I, I always say that, you know, I grew up in the nineties, dude. I, I had a, I, I, I shot a fair one on 42nd street, 42nd street on Broadway and 42nd street. 
and the cops watched it and then we we ended it and then we dude had enough and we just went on and they now they just arrest everybody you know right. like there's no even question about who started it you know it's it's such a different time. yeah that's that's why now i think the policy is that security has to deal with that they just they have security team it's just if someone sneaks but back in the day is once you clear the barricade and legally you might be fair game yeah but yeah. especially the thing was this with the wrestling ring and the wrestlers will always tell you the fans don't most people don't know how to have never entered a wrestling ring in their life right, right. so the right. instinct is not to slide under they get in and stick their head in first <laughs> and then, see and then just, goes, all you have to do is punt them right in the head if you see them coming <laughs> And mm -hmm. then you're you're good to go, and then you you don't get in any trouble. But I'm trying this to. This sounds a... like Tom and Jerry. It's Tom sticking <laughs> his head in, <laughs> and I Jerry mean, hitting him with a big mallet. <laughs> that's what yeah, it's pretty much. equivalent to, man. Pretty much. That's crazy. I mean, I I was I was I remember fucking uh, Ben Bailey spitting in this chick's face, like. <laughs> He had a little anger problem back in the day. But what, did, what happened with the Ben Bailey incident? They, they were just, you know, they were arguing. The chick kept hackling and talking shit. And he was this. And, and Ben Ben was like, you know, he's not no like Ben boxed and he wrestled in high school and shit. And this and the dude that she was with some guy and the, and and then the chick came up and he just he hocked a loogie in her face. And he was like, oh, shit. You know, it was. Uh, yeah. And. Joe Matarese used to get into a lot of fights. Like it was almost like he had a he had a, a thing where he would just get into people. Well, and in I, all fair, Joe Matarese released an album which was uh, <laughs> consisted of all tracks of him fighting him. with the audience. <laughs> like he released <laughs> an entire ten track comedy album which was just him. And I think it's called like, Joe Matarese versus the audience. Yeah, and it's like That's great. what's the least common denominator here, guys? Uh, Joe Matarese. It's all mm -hmm. it's always him. I've never but I mean, there's a couple of dudes that kind of institute that kind of. Um, and then when I when I used to do black rooms that that could happen, that could definitely happen. You get somebody's getting roasted. Um, I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you remember, Harry. I don't know if you remember Russell's Russell Simmons. His favorite comic was uh, uh, G. George. G. He used to George, do he, he used to call himself G. George from Valley Forge. He used to do old school uh, stock jokes with a different twist, and he would tell jokes, you know. Of, Let me uh, see if I recognize this guy. And he, I, I produced the show, and he, there was a dude, a, fr a good friend of mine, who was like a like a kingpin. He was like a drug kingpin, and he, he was a dark skinned dude, and he starts roasting him about how black he is and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, I'm standing on the side going, Ixnay on the Oaks Jay, oh, right? Jesus. And um, you don't see that. And he goes, uh, he's sitting back with his crew. And I'm like, you have no idea how violent this is, right? And uh, the guy says, and I actually used this line a couple of times. He goes, uh, hey, funny man. You ever hear about the joke, the joke about the comic found dead in the dumpster? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> which is which is super funny. That's, super. And he goes, I'll tell you after the show. <laughs> that's that's even funnier. That's even that's funnier. So funny. Fuck, man. It's terrible when you get a, a, a roaster gets a good one on you, like a heckler uh, yeah. gets a good one on you. You're like, well, Fuck, first, man, that first is, he kind of said, mm. yo, all right, yo, I get it. I can take it. Spread. Yo, he said, yo, yo. Spread that shit around a little bit, like, like you. You know what? Like, he was being reasonable. Yeah, he was, was being reasonable. reasonable. I get it. Yeah. It's fun. We're all having fun, but and, Jesus. And G. George mm -hmm. was like relentless. He was like, "Motherfucker, dude, you don't tell me this. Is my motherfucking show. I fucking black ass motherfucker look like a black Q-tip." Blah, blah 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 blah. He just kept going. You look like an oil slick. You look like a seal. Yeah, he was like, "Yo, just yo, spread that shit." And then he he said it. You ever find you ever find like you hear the joke about the guy found dead in the dumpster? The, I'll tell comedian. you about the show. And I was like, dog. And I, I went over there. I was like, doggy. And then I, I went, I had to snake the dude out of the club. Because like it could have got it could have got real funky. But yeah. Did you find that, Harry? Or no? Uh, um which one? I'm looking for the Bret Hart one. I which don't know what whatever you was looking for. You look, I'm, I can see your eyes dancing. Sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying to find the, a good one of the Bret Hart thing. But uh, this is a really fun rabbit hole load to go down is, is fans coming up on stage 
and or, or coming into wrestling rings and just seeing what happens because you, you'll, this is when you're catching everybody off guard. Yeah, yeah, they're in their own zone. They're going. They're in their moment. Okay, here we go. Let's see. This is great. Wait, this is that's Bret Hart. That's Bret yeah. Hart doing the Hall of Fame. Speech. Wow, he's an older guy. I mean, you know, he's also. Wow, had I've never seen old pictures of him. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, this oh, is yeah. from 2019, so this wasn't that long ago. Wow, I can't even see his. I can't really even see his. You know, because you're so used to him being wet. <laughs> like, yeah, like, black like hair. I can't recognize the, he, you him. Know what? He <laughs> looks almost the same, except he's got it's gray hair. But I mean, he's an older guy. Watch this guy comes in from underneath. Oh yeah, he got the pin. Grabs him and throws him to the ground, and then immediately. Like fucking 10 to 20 wrestlers come in. They don't even wait for security. And some of them are covering him up and some of them are kicking the shit out of him. Really? Dude, I mean, his nephew was there. Watch. They're going to drag him down from underneath like they're dragging him. Uh huh. And then there's a couple guys that are getting their shots in old school wise. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, do you think, thing, that, do you think yeah. the audience thought it was it was planned? Uh, no, probably no, not. No. no, they wouldn't. First of all, Bret Hart is like on an. He had a uh, he got kicked in the head by Goldberg. He had to retire for concussion reasons. Really? So Bret Hart is a no do not touch Bret Hart like at uh, all because he is he could seriously get hurt. Wow. So nobody thought everybody knew that this was like this fucking guy was a lunatic. There's also no reason for Bret Hart to be doing a storyline in the middle of a Hall of Fame <laughs> speech. <laughs> but look, how long did Mula Mula? I mean, Adams was old as shit. When Ooh, she was still, do yeah, yeah, they were still doing stuff, but I mean, that was during the regular show. I'm trying to see if they had Mula had to be 60 something, right? She wrestled into oh my god, 70s, into 70s, the, the 70s she, they would do, she would go through tables in her yeah, 70s. Mula, Mula let them uh throw her through a table, the Dudley boys power bombed her through a table. <laughs> And what, what was her, the, the chick she used to, the May other Young. older? May Young was older than her, though, right? Yeah, May Young. Yeah. They were both older. Let's see if this these are comics getting, uh, I want to play the audio. Oh, my God. Yeah, this, this I guess happens more. This is like a compilation. Uh, this is great. This is great. No, I, I, no, no, I've seen close. some of these videos that are clearly staged. I think maybe I don't. I want to say yeah, Polly Shore had one that was completely staged. Yeah. Yeah, Polly Shore had one. Somebody well, get just, the police. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Polly's was a work. I'm not sure, though. Polly's was like a bullshit work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's I've seen insane. also one with the guitar. A guy comes on stage. The guy I'll try to find. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You're talking yes, about the yes, honky tonk yes. man? No, not, not the, the honky tonk. Tonk. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, this is even better. This guy goes, you all saw that, right? He, he was he was attacking me. And then the audience is like, nope. <laughs> Here we go. Wait, I'm trying to see. That looks like the honky tonk man. You just don't have they to all look like the honky tonk man. <laughs> and the guy's going to come up. Go. Your guy's going to come up. Oh, man. Just oh. smacked. You can't oh, he see broke it. his guitar. You can't see him connecting with it. He oh, broke yeah. his guitar on wow. him. But the best part is this. People think uh, because of the honky tonk man, like they think you could just break a guitar over somebody. <laughs> those guitars are those guitars are hollowed out. They're gimmicked. If you hit yeah, somebody yeah. with a real guitar, that is like, a, this, especially this, an electric guitar. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's Definitely. crazy. Um, Marcus, I want to ask you about this whole thing. I mean, so uh, clearly you do good. You, you got a girlfriend or no? You, you got are you uh, with? No, I'm married. Oh, you're married. How long mm -hmm. you been married? Uh, it'll be nine years in August. Wow. How old are you? Twelve? Like, when did you get married? <laughs> <laughs> Would you give her a block? And she, she was I like, got I'm married in? married when I was uh, 28. I'm 36. Oh, cool, cool, cool. You have kids, too, or no? Uh, I, no, I have a stepdaughter, though. Okay. That's dope. Yeah. You yeah. probably you yeah. did good with the ladies, huh? Back in the days, I could. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I had fun, you know? <laughs> yeah i mean i was spoken I was, like I, an old hoe yeah <laughs> i was in a i would I say like good. i was i did i had like a lot of girlfriends for a few years so i was yeah. you know i was in one of those guys you were a was, serial monogamous type of dude exactly yep 100 wow. percent. did were you were your parents together or no did they stay together my or they parents they get this man this is gross my parents were high school sweethearts wow oh, boy still together still, still <laughs> Why madly that's in love. gross <laughs> it's like that's it's just like because marcus like has least... experienced the world 
And just the idea that they found the one couple, the one person in their high school, and they've been together with nobody else for that long. What were you going to say, Marcus? <laughs> it's it's not it's not gross. It's beautiful. But it's like, don't you want to like, you, you know, you think like, OK, don't you want to don't you wish they were with other people too at some point just to see what else is out there? Um, but but hey, if it works for them, they're they're happy. They love each other very much. So um, and I came from that. So I thought like this is going to be me, too. So when I was in high school and my high school girlfriend, I like I was like, oh, this is probably going to be it. Because I, I was just like thinking, oh, everyone meets their wife in high school. Right. Uh, right. Thankfully, thankfully, that was not the case. <laughs> um, and I met my wife and she is uh, more amazing than any girl like I've ever been with by leaps and bounds. That's dope. That's what dope. is it it's... about her that made you want to settle down? Um, She's really smart. <laughs> like she's 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 down for anything. She's super smart. Um, she can talk. We can talk about anything for hours and hours. Like we before we got together, we were both um, kind of pen paling, emailing each other back and forth. So we had mm-hmm. met uh, through mutual friends and then we were both kind of seeing other people. So we just and she lived in Wisconsin. I lived in New York. So we kind of pen pal and we would just like have these really fun conversation sometimes about nothing like we even made up like different characters we would talk in like fake accents and it was just all <laughs> like she just just like shooting the shit like not not thinking did, so much I, like I, I did the same thing only they, it was their real accent it was a lot of <laughs> a lot of different holes <laughs> with a lot of different accents from different countries <laughs> And like, um, my wife is, is a little bit older than me too. So I liked, I liked that. I thought it was really cool that she had, it was kind of no games. I didn't have to worry about people in their early twenties or trying to uh, make me jealous or, you know, right, right. there wasn't any of that. BS now, that she had, she, it's her daughter. She, it's her daughter. That, that she's I, I, daughter. Yes. And how old, how old were you when you, when you guys actually hooked up? How old was the daughter when you guys hooked up? Bro, are you sitting down? Yeah, she must have been like seventeen or eighteen. Oh, the oh the daughter was oh wait wait a minute wait wait oh, oh, oh. okay so you gotta watch you gotta watch my set bro I yeah. yeah what's the age gap to get this very clear uh, so what, we have we have there's like fifteen years in between us wow yeah. that's dope I mean but you're right you know when somebody you know if this is a kind of a frivolousness that young girls have where it's just all gonna like they think it's just all gonna work out like i can just kind of play and, and and when you get older there's a seriousness about women have a seriousness about relationships and stuff like that because it's it's just uh i think it's because they've been through some shit yeah. so they're one a more appreciative of the stuff and they're able to put aside a little bit more of the bullshit and stuff that in a younger relationship would create problems or they're just a little more confident and they've been through some shit. So they're more appreciative. Of I, a I don't good know parent. if it's as confident as it is appreciative. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you been through it, you know, the bullshit and you go, look, I, I, I know a nice guy. This, they don't, they don't toss a nice guy to the side. Yeah, exactly. They appreciate the shit that, that, that a guy is being nice and not just being a bitch or whatever. I mean, your or girl just, is, is older than you or no? Is she older than you? No. Yeah. Yeah, but not by a ton, but no. by a little bit, by like a couple years. But it's mm-hmm. it's but it's different. Yeah. It's it's such a different thing. A, it feels completely different than dating yeah. a, a girl in her twenties. Yeah. Yeah, because completely different. Yeah, yeah. But it, there's like no games. It's like you're a nice. It's like young girls are like, oh, he's so nice. I don't like him. You know, what I mean? right. like he likes me too much. That could cost Ew. you the job. Yeah, Being too nice could cost you the gig and yeah. you don't even mm-hmm. know it. I mean, there, there are still games, just they're different games, you know, like <laughs> yeah. they're just different and they're more like approachable. If you're open and honest there, you shouldn't have any problems with any of these games. But what games, um, what games do you perceive? The, what are the difference in the games? Oh, I mean, well, you know, OK, so when you're younger, um, it's uh, maybe I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Um one of the games could oh you can come up you can come up one of the games could be um uh i don't know you're you're uh uh yeah. give me an example you know, you tr- give me a, a you try a, to make like like i i i i've been in situations where people try to make you jealous by hanging out with certain people and, okay and, right. and and that that 
I, I don't think on um, either side hasn't been a thing because we were just open with our, Hey, I like you. You like me. Let's be together. We don't have to uh, worry about, uh, you know, th- these are my intentions. I'm making them clear. These are my expectations. I'm making them clear to you. You know, a lot of times it's just having that open dialogue that when you're in your twenties, you don't really feel like you want to have because it's like, well, let's just have fun and see what happens. Yeah. Um, Right, because for, you're for being me, you're being disingenuous yeah. in the first place. For me, I'll yeah. say f- for me, like the difference is, for example, if I'm busy doing it with the stand up stuff, right? Like I had an important audition or whatever. So my girl can put aside like if I don't talk to her all day because I'm working on some stuff, she doesn't trip about it necessarily. Where a younger girl has a little bit more of a, a fragile ego a little bit where she's like, if he's not talking he, to me, obviously he doesn't care about me. And it's like, no, no, that has nothing to do with this. So she can appreciate that if I'm working, I might not necessarily be talking to her. But when I do talk to her, you know, it, we're going to have a good time. That's totally I mean, my end. Giving yeah. Attention is a big thing, too. I mean, when, you know, when you're in your 20s or you're, you're even in high school, giving your, your girlfriend, your boyfriend attention, it means everything to them. Writing notes to them, sending them emails, texts. And it, it still is a big thing. Like you want to feel like someone is thinking about you, right, right. Um, but it's not going to be a deal breaker. Right. If you have an important show coming up, you have to, you have to study, you have to, and it doesn't work, have to be know? all the time is the other thing too. Correct. Like a hundred percent. I don't know. I, like you said, I think, I think the need, the need is the same, but I think that the, the pra- there's a pragmatic level where we understand where we got to work. We have to achieve certain things. There's certain well, things have- that we're pursuing. That's not, personal i mean well, I, you have I, responsibilities right. too when you're older like you have to provide for a family you have to save you have to do taxes there's a lot more than just like we're just gonna date and see what happens you, right, know, you right. have to like think about the future do you want to have kids do you want to move in together there's a right. lot like the stakes are raised when you're yeah. when you get older also, and especially a woman appreciates those responsibilities where a 20 year old might not like i don't give a fuck about your taxes i want to go hang out and i want to go to the club or whatever <laughs> totally, I, never, totally. I never had a young girl ask me what my credit score was exactly <laughs> never <laughs> i didn't so and these are these are also things that I, I was 28 when i married my wife but i learned a lot from her because she had yeah. been through it and yeah. it's so nice just to be like, do you know how to do this? She's like, yes, I can do this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's great. <laughs> like she, uh, like I, I talk about this in my act, but God forbid if anything were to ever happen to us, I could never be with someone my own age because I like, uh, she's just so much smart. Like she has 15 years of experience on me. You know what I mean? Right. Like she, and she's, she's also like, she, she won't admit to this, but I think she's like a, some kind of savant because she's so smart. Like she remembers everything. Um, like we were in the car at like six in the morning and an Uber going to LaGuardia and there was like classical music playing and she, mm-hmm. and she just like sat back and was like, I think I know who, whose song this is. And I thought that she was joking, but she said like some classical name, some really mm-hmm. obscure name, not nothing I'd ever heard of before. Like Beethoven. It wasn't Beethoven. <laughs> no, it was someone, I forget who it was, but it was like a, definitely like a, a classical uh, composer I had mm-hmm. never heard of. And yeah, she just knows everything. It's, I, it's, and Marcus, it's either she's she's either a savant or you are immature and don't know shit. One of the other, like, it could be it's that. A, it's a definitely a combination. I will say, I will happily but admit that is definitely a combination. Like, the thing, I can't though, do much for Marcus. Even even either case, dating a girl who's younger than him and don't know shit ain't going to help him. Right, so right, right, right. Whether, whether like, she's we smart both don't or Marcus know is dumb, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. Ain't going to be helped by a twenty-one-year-old who don't know shit. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, I, yeah, and also my perspective is my reality. So if I think she's a genius in my in my world. She's a genius, and I'm pretty sure she is. Right, right, right. I re- I remember I was 22 and dating this this chick who was 44, and she she um she she was blowing me um and did she did this? I never forget this. This is how amazing it was she was blowing me and then licked my balls, but she was straddled over me. And then she was jacking me like a pool cue, like like she like like she was doing a, pee. and I was like, this is amazing, like like Minnesota but, fats. Yeah, like she was <laughs> she was jerking my dick like a pool cue, and then rubbing the head on her nipple at the same time. I was like, this is how, who taught you this? Yeah, this like, is like say like when, when right you watch there, Buddy Rich too, play the drums. Like three two. That's three too many things for me. I'm just like, just do one thing and be good at that one thing. I don't need you to bring out a bop it. You know. 
<laughs> she, she was, I was like, I, I, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm 55 and I you still, still remember this yeah. pool. I remember this fucking pool cue thing that she did to me. And I'm like, I was fucking amazing. But I mean, I was 22. I, I also remember I remember uh, an old because like I, like I was a male stripper and these older women, these milfy chicks would snatch me up. And I remember this chick. She got this really nice um hotel room, like king size bed, like a five star hotel. And I was like, yeah, let's fuck. Let's fuck. And she was like and I was like, like, fuck. And she was like, look, we she's like, we got the room all night. Like, like, calm down, like just and and it threw me off because I was so accustomed to kind of rushing through it. Like, oh, your mom might be coming home. Who's come? Who's coming in the door? My roommates. On, you know what I mean? I, it, it was like I, I, I remember not even being able to perform because she kept just going, well, we'll just take a nap and then we get to do it again. And then, we, we, you know, if we want you want to stay the weekend, we can get the week. And I was like. This is crazy. This is crazy. I was like losing my mind. But I'm, I mean, I think, you know, it's a funny thing how we perspectively where we're at at the time. And we look at this thing that's so amazing. It's, it's funny because I always say that older guys, like a lot of older guys who have like gone through divorces and then they're trying to get back in the dating scene and they really think that they're worthless. Like they they, you know, they don't look as good as they did or maybe they've lost some hair or they lost whatever. And they really think that they're worthless. But what happens is, is when you understand that, like I always say, older dudes always have a guy like when, you know, they're dating some girl and the plum, you know, the pipe leaks or the play pipe breaks. They know a plumber that, uh, uh, you know, a 40, 50 year old dude knows a plumber. He knows a carpenter. He knows a guy who can fix your transmission. He knows a tag. He's got a tax guy. He's got a. And so all of those things kind of act like a, 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 a the safety net that younger girls just have no idea, like how to approach these. I think in a way, the same way that you kind of look at your at, at your wife now. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a perfect way to, to uh, describe it. And, and knowing that value, but I think that they don't men, especially they don't they they understand that they have this value. But but it, because it comes because it becomes so easy to them, um, they don't think that it has any value. And so they're very insecure about the things that they think that this person wants. Like you like, I mean, like if you think about it, what was one of the things that you that you remember early on that you that your wife knew about that you didn't know about? that kind of really kind of blew your mind. It was like, Oh, this is cool. Oh man. I mean, you name and literally any subjects. <laughs> it was like, I really at the time was only knew about like comedy and performing. Cause in school I was a terrible student. Um, I knew I studied comedy. I studied um, like variety arts. I loved all that stuff. I, so I really, I never, I didn't really know, like I had interest in like wrestling and I love boy bands and like weird stuff. So I was like, it was. Uh, oh, so you like, really, the Hanson joke really, got, it really touched you in a serious no, way. I, you really made my night with that <laughs> comment. Like I'm, I'm still, I'm still like, Oh my gosh, Dante, what else? <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, I have like, you and, do and have like, a jawline kind of like Zach from, Saving the bell. Saving the bell. I have. I even have O Town on my T-shirt right now, which is a boy band from the. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Youth- I'm not that old, Marcus. Jesus. One Christ. of my. Uh, well, they they were a little obscure. One of my. Uh, so I became friends with one of the guys in the band, and we actually did a stand-up set together at a Soul Jules not too long ago. Oh, really? Oh, well, he's yeah. doing stand-up now. Yeah, yeah. He he goes on with Michael Yo sometimes. It's great. That's dope. That's dope. Um, was he any good? Yeah, his name's Trevor Pennick. Yeah, he was great. I mean, the thing was is that he lived this amazing life as this pop star. When he went on stage, he was talking about like dating and relationships. I'm like, bro, you have such a rare story. I want to hear about you hear being that. in a boy band. I want to hear yeah. about the TRL days. I want to yeah. hear about the American, the Billboard Music Awards. I want to hear yeah. about you playing on like NBA Entertainment League. I want to hear those types of stories. And he's mm. like, yeah, I got this really funny story about Kevin Hart. I'm like, well, you should talk about it. <laughs> it's great. So that, I think that always happens. More- when, 
people from outside of the comedy business go into the comedy business. They want to do impressions of comedians, basically. So they want to do the. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 bro. We want to hear the interesting shit that you do. Like, yeah, your life. What makes you unique? And it's so like there's so much to, to work on. Like he was in a popular boy band. He opened for Britney Spears in an arena. Like like wow. 50 dates with Britney. Like there's so much you can talk about. Yeah. Jesus. Marcus, you're, you're a handsome guy. What was it like in high school dating wise? Forget about the education thing. How did that? I mean, did you have any skills whatsoever? Or you were just so busy watching wrestling that nothing ever, ever else ever happened in dating in high school. Yeah. Like what were you like in high school? I'm always curious what people were well, like dating. My, wise, Cause I didn't, I wasn't shit. I just, I had like three girlfriends in high school. Um, and they all were not bad. Know, that's tight. like one a year. That's actually right. like one a year. That's pretty good. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So, I mean, I like a lot of people in high school thought I was gay, which uh, which kind of bothered me a little bit because I wasn't. But uh, I was in theater. I was very outgoing. I love boy bands. I love wrestling. Like it like I checked a lot of boxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, on the other on the other well, end of that. Right. Right. So it didn't that didn't help. Um, <laughs> but I didn't help your dating um, situation. Yeah. No, I mean, it was fine because I, I was like I said, I was like in relation, like I dated a girl for a year, a girl for two years in high school. So I only had like the first half of freshman year. I wasn't with a girl. And I, I kind of think maybe I was with these girls to, just to prove everyone, you know, I'm, I'm not gay. Because like when you're in high school and there's like a gay rumor about you, that's a huge deal. That Yeah, yeah. Back, back in the day. Know, yeah. Can, more than now. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and like, the, you know, that 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 can really bother someone, especially when people are calling you gay and making it sound like a bad thing. Like if I was really gay, I would have yeah. been so depressed and it would have yeah. really just destroyed me. Um, so I, I can't imagine what people went through back then when being bullied and stuff like that. Um, so I, you know, um, my dad was also the principal of the high school that I went to, uh, oh, which Jesus. you think would like stop the, <laughs> right. that would stop the bullying. But oh, the make kid, it worse. It was like, ah, yeah. the principal and his gay son <laughs> Man, probably made it worse. <laughs> Yeah, that's so people he, love he, my, pe people love my dad. Um, and so it, it was and he never had to deal with like disciplinary stuff. That was always the assistant principal. So people mm -hmm. just saw my dad and like had good talk, positive vibes with him. And he was a, he was a cool guy. He played basketball in college. Mm -hmm. He uh, was he's a, he's a cool guy. Um, but yeah, it was. Yeah, so that's pretty much how it went for me. Did you have a, you have a good relationship with him? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Both both all my family's all really tight. In fact, after this, I'm going down to meet my brother for dinner. Um, nice. He lives in the city, too. So, yeah, it's, it's a tight family. That's dope. That's dope. It's funny because I, 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 I was doing a I was doing a consultation with somebody and the guy who I was talking to, he was talking about like he, he listens to the show. Well, he started listening to the show and um, actually he he. He was like a marketing dude and he was like helping us, you know, trying to help us grow the show. And and uh, he his the guy said, um, he said, yeah, you know, I should get you to talk to my son and da, 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 like that. And he goes, you know, it's just uh, he was like, oh, he's 26 years old and he's you know, he doesn't really know what he wants to do. And he did. And da, 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 da. And I said to the guy, I said, um, I go, he's 26 years old. I go, is he, is he, is he just totally oblivious? And he goes, ah, well, you know, I don't know. He has no direction. And I said, well, let me ask you something. I, I go, cause it just seemed to me like the guy was disappointed about who his son had become, you know? And I said to him, did you ever think, I said, do you honestly think that your son has been around you for 26 years and, and he's unaware of the fact that you are disappointed at who he has become Oof. as a as a kid. I, I, you know, that you're frivolously, oh, you should talk to my son, which is basically saying my son's not good enough. I go, but he's he's been listening. He's around, around you for 26 years. I go, do you think that you've hid, you've hid that from him, that you're disappointed with him, that he's not more like you? And and so it's interesting, like you talk about your your dad playing basketball and, and, and being a principal and all of this stuff. But the fact that you say that you, you had such a close relationship like that talks about that speaks to the, the maturity of your dad and the openness of him uh, giving you the ability to be the theater, the theater geek and the performer, as opposed to. The guy who was playing basketball, who you know what I mean? The popular yeah, I, guy. I think my dad was almost living vicariously through me, though, because he was uh. so supportive 
And he saw, he knew where I shined in the world and which was like performing and doing theater at the time. He would even let me take his car that was parked in the principal spot when I'm a senior in high school, skip school, go to the gym and do, because at the time I was a, a professional juggler. So I would do like professional yeah, juggling shows. Yeah, I was hearing shows. about this juggling thing. Like, Marcus is a phenomenal <laughs> juggler. He's give, he's basically has given up his career. I don't know if you've given it up fully, but he wants to do comedy legitimately because unfortunately juggling is looked down upon in the comedy community, but he's fantastic at what he does. Oh, uh, thank you. I mean, I, I, I like juggling and it's done a lot for me, but the only thing I wasn't doing was evolving as a, person as a performer when i stopped relying on um my props to carry me through a show it really changed the way i thought about comedy and it really opened you'd think it would close doors but really it opened so many other doors so many areas i i, I can go now i don't have to rely on having to do a juggling show if i want to tell a story a long-form story i'm able to do that if i want to talk about my relationship with my wife or my granddaughter or my stepdaughter i'm, I'm able to do that Wow. Uh, and that's what, by the way, like that goes to talking with guys, like what courage it takes for like reinventing yourself because Marcus had established a very successful career as a juggler, like touring and, you know, yeah. doing cr cruises and just making a good living. But he acknowledged, Hey, I'm not evolving and I'm not happy fully. So I have to adjust and take a risk and reinvent myself. And that's the thing that I kind of had to do as a human being and that guys have to do sometimes. If you're not happy with yourself, you got to be willing to take the risk and change who you are if you're not happy. Better and it, yourself. It's, and it's, it's right. courageous and it, to a degree. And it, thank you. And, and if you make a mistake, if you don't like it, like you can always go back. You know, I might be doing mm. juggling shows in eight months from now. We don't know. Uh, but, you know, I think life is all about taking risks. And I think if you, you know, you just take chances and try something. And yeah, you're right. I wasn't happy with, you know, my juggling show was great. It was fine. There weren't any, there wasn't anything wrong with it. Um, mm. But I'm, I'm having so much fun just going to shows and not bringing like trunks of shit <laughs> with me. Right, right, um, right, right. But I think, Harry, what you're saying about um, like uh, when you're like a man and you want to change it, like it kind of goes back to being self-aware enough. You have to be self-aware enough first to know how other people think of you and then how you think of yourself, um, because being self-aware doesn't mean you just you kind of understand how, how people perceive you, but how you perceive yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, that's never too late. Like you can. Yeah. It's not too late. You didn't. Like, you're like, hey, I committed 10 years, 20 years to this. What am I going to do? I can't just stop. Like you can, you can, right. like Dante always says, the cool thing about, uh, you don't have to do that tomorrow. You don't have to be that tomorrow. Like well, I, used to say a little, I used to say, uh, being a bitch there you go. <laughs> is, right. is excuse me breathing. for trying to make it palpable to <laughs> <laughs> being a bitch. The greatest thing in the world about being a bitch is that tomorrow you don't have to be, you know, to, to, to start tomorrow, you know, I you tried to wake put up. that on coffee mugs, and it's just not moving the way I thought I think it would. It's gonna go. The, I think yeah. it's gonna go. Harry. I think we just we just can't spell it out. We'll do. Uh, well, you wanted to you wanted percent. to underline the bitch part and put yeah. it in bold. And I was gonna I was gonna just un, uh, just put uh, uh, blanks for the rest of it. Being a bitch, and then yeah. <laughs> all the rest you fill in the rest. Um, it there's something something that crossed my mind about this, but you know what? Um. Let's, let's, do let's shut Patreon. this down yeah. and then we're going to do a few minutes on the Patreon for the Patreon followers. And if you, can you hang out? Um, of course. Uh, can you plug all your stuff? Any of your social media and anything that you yeah, want please. the fans to know about? Yeah, I do shows all around, all around the country, all around. Um, you can get me on Instagram at Marcus J. Monroe. TikTok at Marcus J. Monroe. My website is TupacIsStillAlive.com. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, um, fine. Just search my name, Marcus Monroe, and you, uh, it should sh pull up. Harry, and, uh, talk to me. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know what? I'll plug. Uh, in addition to at Harry Terjani and all my social media, if you want to see the video of my Andy Kaufman Award thing that uh, Marcus uh, is part of, you can go to YouTube, put in Harry Terjanian and Andy Kaufman Award, and there's a whole piece of what I did to win the Andy yeah, Kaufman Award. Yeah, that was crazy. After put a five lot of years time. of losing, Harry didn't the talk to thing. me for like a week when that because he was so busy. I can't I talk about. I got to all hit. night. Yeah. Oh yeah, night. I bet. I mean, that was that was you. We filmed that maybe like two months before the awards, the, mm -hmm. the competition. So you were you had this in your head like for a yeah, while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, everything with me, Dante Nero. Yeah, I mean, y'all know how to get me on social media. Just Dante Nero and all that stuff will come up. If you want a one-on-one consultation, though, you can always go DanteNero.com, click on consult. Don't forget the Man School uh, YouTube page. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, clips and stuff going up on that. Um, my YouTube page, I'm starting to work on that. I'm starting to put clips on that. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. Um, I love y'all, man. Uh, don't forget to sign up for the Patreon, too. And you'll be getting this behind-the-scenes stuff also. Uh, that's Man School 202 uh, slash page. Man School 202. I'm sorry. Patreon.com slash Man School 202. Um, uh, we're out, man. Thank you. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.